7. Hidden CMD Commands Hackers Hope You Never Learn Let's start by typing CMD in the search bar and running command prompt as an administrator. The sci-fi command overrides free space on a drive to prevent the recovery of deleted files. It ensures that previously deleted files cannot be restored by hackers using data recovery tools. Identify the drive letter you want to wipe, which could be drive C, D or any other available drive. Use the DIR command to ensure you are targeting the correct drive. Type DIR and replace drive with the targeted drive letter to check its content. When done, run the command sci-fi. W instructs the command to wipe free space on the specified drive. Replace drive with the actual drive letter, followed by a colon. The command will start overwriting the free space on the drive. The command does not affect existing files, but targets the free space on the drive. It also performs multiple passes to overwrite the free space with zeros, random data, and more zeros for final cleanup. Once complete, the free space will have been securely wiped and hackers will not be able to recover files deleted from the wipe free space. The Shadow Task command can help you detect suspicious or unauthorized tasks that hackers may have created for persistence or malicious purposes. Type Shadow Task. This is a command prompt utility used for managing shadow tasks in Windows. However, malicious users may use it to shadow tasks for things like persistence or remote access. The query flag is used to list the shadow task on your system. It will show all tasks that have been created in the task scheduler. FO list flag specifies the output format. In this case, it lists the task in a readable list format. V flag provides a verbose output. It includes additional details about each task, such as the task status, last runtime, next runtime, and more. It is essential for identifying tasks that may seem out of the ordinary. When executed, the command will output a list of tasks on your system with its details. Task name is the name of the scheduled task. Malicious tasks may have misleading names that try to blend in with system tasks. Next runtime is the next time the task is set to execute. A hacker may schedule a task to run at odd hours, such as during system downtime or when you are not actively using the system. Status shows whether the task is ready, which is scheduled to run, or disabled, which is not active. Malicious tasks may show as ready, or sometimes they might be disabled to hide their presence. Last runtime is when the task was last executed. If it ran recently and you don't recognize the task, it could be suspicious, especially the ones located in suspicious directories. Last result is the field that shows the exit code of the last time the task ran. A result of zero generally means success, while non-zero values might indicate an error. Author typically shows the user or system account under which the task is scheduled. If it's not a known system account, this could be a sign of something suspicious. Run as user indicates which user the task runs as. If it's running under system or another high-level account without a valid reason, this could be a sign of a backdoor or persistence mechanism. Logon mode shows how the task is triggered, whether it needs user interaction or not. If it is set to run in the background without user input, it could be a malicious task operating without your knowledge. Task to run shows the path of the executable that the task runs. If it's an unexpected or unknown program, this is a red flag. Start in is the directory from which the task runs. If the directory is unusual or unexpected, it could be a sign of something fishy. Comment is the description of the task. Legitimate tasks typically have clear descriptions. Suspicious or malicious tasks that lack details should be investigated. To investigate further, Look at the file path of the executable in the task to run field. Copy its path and navigate to the location of the file. Open File Explorer and paste the path in the address bar to locate it. Check the directory for any files that seems suspicious. If you find the suspicious executable file, right click it and select show more options 
scan it with antivirus or any malware detection software. I recommend using Malwarebytes. Click the link in the video description below to get access to the recent discount offers. Malwarebytes will thoroughly analyze the executable file to detect known malware signatures and suspicious behaviors. It checks if the file attempts to modify system settings, access sensitive data, or execute unauthorized processes. If a threat is detected, Malwarebytes will isolate the file in a quarantine area to prevent it from harming your system further and will recommend deleting the file permanently. After the scan, Malwarebytes provides a detailed report listing any detected threats, their locations, and the actions taken. The net user command in command prompt is a powerful way to help detect and address unauthorized accounts, improving your system's security. Type the following command and press enter. Net user. This will display a list of all user accounts on the computer, including both active and hidden user accounts. Common default accounts include administrator, which is the system administration account, the guest account, which is a limited access account. Look for unauthorized accounts. Any unexpected accounts may indicate unauthorized access or a compromised system. Investigate suspicious accounts. Check account details. To get more information about a specific account, use net user and replace account name with the suspicious account name. This will display details about the accounts, such as last logon time and group memberships. Check logon events to track account activity. Let's open event viewer. Type event viewer.msc and press enter to launch the event viewer. In the event viewer window, expand to the windows locks section from the left hand menu. Click on security. This section locks all security related events, including logon attempts and account usage. Look for event ID 4625, which indicates unsuccessful attempts to log in. Right click on an event, select event properties. The key fields to check is the failure reason, which could be example, bad password or account logged out. The account name, which is the username used in the attempt. The logon type shows how the field logon occurred. The number two indicates interactive logon, which means the attempt was made physically at the computer. Source IP indicates the IP address from which the attempt originated. Note down unfamiliar IP addresses. This could signal remote access attempts. Multiple field logon attempts could indicate a brute force attack. To find logon events specifically, look for event ID 4624, which indicates when an account successfully logged into the system. The key fields to check is the account name, which is the user account that logged in. Logon type, which shows how the logon occurred. Logon type 5 occurs when an application configured to run as a Windows service starts on the system using a specific user account. 3 indicates network logon, which is remote access. 10 indicates remote desktop logon. The source network address shows the IP address of the source if accessed remotely. It is a key field to always check. By regularly checking your event viewer for logon events, you can proactively identify suspicious behavior and secure your system. If you find a suspicious account, disable it. Type net user. Replace account name with the suspicious account name. Active. No. This command will disable the account. If the account is confirmed to be malicious, you can permanently delete it. Type net user. The account name. Delete. This proactive approach can help detect and address unauthorized accounts, improving your system's security. You never learn. The WMIC process get name executable path command is a powerful tool to list all running processes on a Windows system along with the full file paths of their executable files. This is crucial for identifying unknown or malicious programs that could compromise your system. Type WMIC, which stands for Windows Management Instrumentation Command Line 2. Process target the running processes on the system. Get name executable path retrieves the names of processes and their corresponding executable file paths. The output lists all active processes and their executable paths in two columns. The name represents the name of the running processes. 
executable part is the full file part of the process executable. Hackers often disguise malicious processes as legitimate ones or execute them from suspicious locations. This command helps identify such anomalies. Any process you don't recognize warrants further investigation. Legitimate processes usually run from system or program directories. An example is Drive C Windows System 32 or Drive C program files. Malicious processes might run from unusual locations, such as temporary directories, which could be drive C, users, app data, local temp. Also, malware often uses generic or inconspicuous names, such as SVC host executable or notepad executable, but executes from non standard directories. Even legitimate process names, such as explorer executable, could be used maliciously if running from the wrong directory. For example, an expected path could be drive C, Windows, explorer executable but a suspicious part could be drive c users explorer.executable to investigate suspicious processes copy its part open file explorer and paste the part at the address bar to locate the file identify the executable file and check the digital signature right click the suspicious file Go to properties and check the digital signature step. Missing or invalid signatures are red flags. The attribute command is a powerful Windows command prompt command that modifies the attributes of a specific file or folder. This particular combination of attributes effectively hides files or folders while also designating them as system items, making them significantly harder to find or modify, even for hackers. Type attribute, which modifies file or folder attributes. H adds the hidden attribute, making the file or folder invisible in file explorer. S adds the system attribute making the file or folder as a protected system item. Replace file or folder with a part of the file you want to protect. Navigate to the file or folder's location. Copy its path. And paste it in the command. the files or folders will be hidden while also designated as system items, making them significantly harder to find or modify even for attackers. To confirm that the attributes have been applied, run attributes and replace the path of the hidden or protected file or folder. The output should display HS before the file name, indicating the file is hidden and marked as a system file. While not foolproof, it adds an extra layer of security, especially against inexperienced users or basic malware scripts. To unhide and reveal files, type attribute HS and replace file or folder with a part of the file or folder you want to unhide and reveal. This makes the file or folder visible and removes its system designation. The netstat command uncovers unauthorized network connections and identifies the processes behind them. Type the following command netstat. A shows all active connections and listening ports and displays addresses and port numbers in numeric formats. O includes the process ID for each connection or listening port. When executed, it will display a table with the following columns. Proto indicates the protocol used, which could be TCP or UDP. Local address is your computer's IP address and port number. Foreign address indicates the remote computer's IP address and port number. State is the connection status, which could be established, listing, or time width. PID is the process ID associated with the connection. Look for suspicious connections. Check for unfamiliar foreign addresses. Focus on established connections for active sessions. Watch for unknown connections to sensitive ports. Connections with listening state indicates open ports waiting for incoming connections. Identify the process behind these connections. Note the PID associated with the suspicious connection. 
run the following command to find the process name task list which provides details about processes the pipe operator allows chaining commands to process and filters data find str filters the output of task list to display only the lines containing the specified pid replace pid with the actual process id when executed the command will display the name of the process associated with the pid Let's investigate further. Look up the process. Use a search engine like Google or Bing to learn about the process if you don't recognize it. Search for the process name. Use the query process name, then save. Ensure it is a legitimate application or service. If by any means you determine the process is malicious or unauthorized, you can terminate it. In the command prompt, type task kill replace PID with the actual process ID. F. By using the net start command, you can actively monitor and secure your system against unauthorized connections, safeguarding it from potential threats. Who am I privilege command in Windows command prompt is a powerful tool for inspecting the privileges associated with the current user account. Type who am I, which is a command that displays information about the currently logged in user, such as username and domain. The privilege option specifically lists the privileges associated with the current user's security token. When executed, it outputs privilege names, which is the technical names of the privileges, and the descriptions, which is what each privilege allows, states which indicates whether the privilege is currently enabled, disabled, or removed. Hackers might elevate privileges or enable specific ones to perform malicious actions. Watch out for unexpected elevated privileges. Set debug privilege, if enabled, can be used to manipulate or inject code into system processes. Set take ownership privilege can also take control of critical system files. Set load driver privilege allows loading kernel mode drivers, which can be used to execute malicious code. A standard user account should not have administrative privileges enabled. If a non-administrative user has privileges like set impersonate privilege, this could indicate an attack. Hackers often exploit elevated privileges to carry out malicious actions undetected. Knowing how to use this command can help you identify unusual or unexpected privileges, which might indicate that your system has been compromised.